Welcome to Cloud Infrastructure YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about what is FTP server and how does an FTP server work. So let's just get started. So what is FTP? Well, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. Now this is one of the oldest and the most commonly used transfer protocols in the world. Now FTP is a collection of standard protocols that are used to share data among devices that are connected to a network. Remember that you must be connected to the same network. So again, what is FTP? How can we understand FTP? Well, FTP uses a client server model. So basically there is a server that is used to serve data to the client and the client is the one that is requesting data from the server. When the user sends a command to the server requesting the server to send a file to that particular user, the server sends the required file to the client. Then the user gets the file and stores it in his device which can be browser, which can be your mobile phone, which can be anything which is basically known as the client device. Now this process is the most fundamental basic understanding of the work of an FTP server. But there is still a question that needs to be answered and that is why is FTP important and why is it even used? Well, FTP is used in many different scenarios because of the following features and these features cannot be overlooked. First and the foremost is that FTP can be used to backup data from a device to a secured backed up FTP server. Another thing is that FTP can facilitate replications. Now, this is a process of making a clone of data storage. Here, it duplicates the data from a system to another with more resilience availability. And at number third, we have FTP is used to access shared web resources and cloud services to load its data to another system. Now, this is becoming one of the most prominent features of FTP in the modern day world. So how does the FTP or the file transfer protocol actually work? And what are the requirements for it to work? Well, we have explained the basic working of FTP, but now we are going to talk about the requirements for using the FTP. Now to use the FTP, the following requirements are needed. Number one, we need to have an FTP client installed on your machine, may it be your computer or your mobile device. Now, generally these can be an auto FTP manager, FileZilla or FileZilla Pro. And then we need to have an FTP server address. Now, this is the address on which the FTP server is hosted. Now, this can be uh, Google Cloud, this can be Azure, this can be AWS, or this can be even ftp.testdocs.net. And then, one last requirement is to have a username and a password which are specific to that particular server. Now, FTP servers do let you connect without credentials, but this is a threat to the security of the whole file transfer protocol system. Now if you were to categorize the working of an FTP model into major components then that would give us three major components. Now we have the FTP client and we have the FTP server. Now we already know about those because we have talked about them in this video. But other than that there is another component which is the connection between the FTP client and the FTP server. So now we are going to talk about connection. Now generally there are two different types of connection that help the mechanism in FTP. These connection types are control connection and a data connection. Now, since this video is more about FTP, we are not going to discuss control connection and data connection. Just know that, that in control connection, the FTP client sends a connection to the specific port in the server. This connection is used to send commands where the client tells what the server should do and receive a response accordingly. On the other hand, in the data connection, given that the server received the controlling commands from a client, now it should provide what it asked for. Now this model keeps a separate connection for this purpose which is called the data connection. Anyways, now let's talk about that how to establish the connection. Now there are two different modes through which you can establish an FTP connection. Now the first mode is active mode and the second mode is the passive mode. So let's talk about the active mode. In active mode, the user initiates a session using the control channel to connect from a random port from the client device to the port number 21 of the server. Now it sends a command to the server mentioning the port to which the server should be connected to the client device. Now this port is known as the command port. The server then connects the port number 20 to the designated port of the client. Once the connection is established, file transferring will happen using those two ports. On the other hand, in the passive mode, it can be used in scenarios such that the connection establishment is blocked. In this mode, the client initiates all the connection. The server Send the details of the port which need the user to establish the connection. After that, 
the user connects to from a random port of the client to the port number 21 of the FTP server. Now the server sends a PASV command what port of the client should connect to. Once the connection has been properly established, the transferring of data occurs through the ports that have been communicated between the FTP client and FTP server. Lastly, we are going to talk about the different types of FTP. Now there are several types of FTP. At first, we have the anonymous FTP. Now this is the most basic form of FTP. It has no security feature, neither login credentials nor encryption feature. Next up, we have the password protected FTP. Now this is another basic FTP service to be very honest, which requires a username and a password to access the service. Encryption is optional feature, but it is not set by default. And at number 3, we have the FTP secure or the FTPS. Now it is referred to as FTP SSL, which stands for FTP secure sockets layer. Now when the FTP connection is established, this enables the implicit transport layer security which is known as TLS. Anyways, at number 4, we have FTP over explicit SSL and TLS. Similar to FTPS, this protocol also enables explicit TLS support. Now, this is used in secure web and file transferring services. And at number 5, we have secure FTP. Now, SFTP is based on secure shell SSH protocol, but it is still considered to be another type of FTP protocol. Now, this protocol supports more secured file transfer. Anyways, these were the different types of FTP. Now, if you still want to learn more about FTP, then simply check out the link in the description box for the step-by-step -step blog post guide on what is FTP and how does FTP works. And if this video has helped you in any way, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.